I'd like to present you with the DJI Mini 2, DJI Mavic Mini 2. And here it is. And of course, there was a DJI Mini, the original version, which actually looks the same as the DJI Mini 2. Except that this one, instead of a 2K camera, it has a 4K camera, which is a good upgrade, even though the 2K was not bad, but the 4K is even better. And here it is. So it folds, the wings fold out the same way, and they fold in the same way. There it is, here's the bottom. Sound effects are optional. Whoop. Whoop. And this is the size of my hand, pretty big, and that's the size of the Jonah on my, on my hand. There it is. And another thing that's different from the DJI Mini, the original, is that the controller, as you see here, is considerably different in that instead of having the attachment to hold the phone on the bottom, it has it on the top. And the way it opens is you pull it up from the top and you can attach your phone here. It catches on here and it comes up to about that length. So it should be able to fit your phone, even if your phone has a phone case on or a battery pack on because it extends pretty much and it catches right here it has indentations here that helps your phone secure right there another difference and an upgrade to this controller is that they have the cord this cord right here that connects to your phone so you can see what you're shooting it comes already attached to the controller, but not only that, it can live in the controller. It just folds into the controller so you won't lose it. So gone are the days from the original of ordering the 10 pack of connectors, USB connectors, micro USB connectors, USB-C connectors, buying 10 at a time because you just keep losing them. It can fit inside there and then you can just close it and next time you want to shoot it's already in there you don't have to worry about it and it also has a port inside here that can charge your phone as you are using the controller now on the controller itself in the front face you'll see it has two knobs that joysticks that you'll screw on and always make sure they're screwed on completely because these are easy to lose and you also have the home key over here which is now bigger and it's brighter and you also have the power button over here that is also bigger and brighter and it also feels heavier it feels actually like a video game controller think um i don't know a playstation controller think sega genesis it's bulkier, it's sturdier. I wouldn't drop it. I wouldn't want to drop it. It also has three settings that you can move about in the front. It's as it cinematic mode, as normal mode, and it has a sports mode. The coolest looking mode for me is the cinematic mode, but you probably will have your own preference. That's the controller. Over here and on the bottom of it, it also has some space so you can put additional joystick knobs here so you won't lose them. Or in case you lose them, you have extra spare on, on the bottom here. And I would say this is about a little more than a pound, probably almost two pounds. That might add to the weight of your bag. Now, on the drone itself, this Mini 2 has gray batteries instead of black batteries. The original one, the Mini 1, had black batteries. 
and the Mini 2 has great batteries and this is the hub for charging the batteries right and each battery holds about 30 minutes of flight time and here you see the connectors here you'll see the as a power button as a USB-C connector as a USB connector so you can charge batteries connected to an AC adapter and when you're charging your battery you'll notice that they'll go in sequence so they're not all charging at the same time first one will charge completely and it has four lights that run that run consecutively until it's full at four bars and then they will stop at a solid four lights and then it'll go to the next battery and once this is complete it'll go to the next battery if you decide to take one out and put an uncharged battery in and it's charging this one it'll start charging the one that has less battery charge so it's a smart charging hub in that respect and if you want to register it or you want to find replacement information it also has a scan code in the bottom here which makes it easy to register and also buy replacement products or additional products and so does the drone itself on the inside so as i explained even though these gray batteries over here hold 30 minutes if you still have batteries from the original dji mini the first version you can still use those batteries inside this drone. That's something that perhaps you didn't know. It might give you a little bit of flight time, a little bit less flight time because of overall usage and because they hold a little less, but they still work. So if you still have about four batteries that you have from your, your original drone and you have three batteries that you have from this new drone because you bought the Fly More kit, now you have, hey, seven batteries so you can go out there and shoot with this drone and the batteries for this are not overly expensive you could probably get a battery for when if they're having some kind of deal for about sometimes twenty dollars thirty dollars sometimes even less but depending on uh, how available they are they might charge a lot more it also has space here on the bottom so you can add landing gear let's say you go to the beach and you don't want to place this directly on the sand or you're on top of grass and you don't want the blades to interfere with the blades of grass so it also has landing gear that you can buy uh, additional you could add as an attachment and it'll sit high like that and when you take off it's not interfering with the blades of grass or anything around it it comes in handy you might also want to get a mat but let's say you don't have any of that you could also use a book you could use a composition book just take it with you and take off like that this uses just like the original it has uh it takes sd card micro sd cards and you can also charge this directly by uh, connecting it to charge the battery inside this drone directly by connecting it to a usb c charger right there it has that port available for you it, you can also use it to transfer images um, what else can I say about this? When you're flying for a long time, sometimes it does get a little hot, but I notice it has less problems at, than uh, the original had. It also has greater range. I don't know if they made upgrades to the antenna or not, but you can notice that you can go higher and you'll get less of that interference or air aircraft interference like you did with the original. So this is the hub for the original. So I have three batteries with that and this is the one for the DJI Mini 2 but again both are able to be used with this drone. One thing I want to say about this drone after using it the first few times it takes good photos not super professional photos but you can shoot at a high quality with this 4k camera attached to it it's not overly complicated to fly this drone if you are a beginner or a, even a semi-professional 
it is pretty light. Now, I'll say one thing, and I've seen a lot of a lot of other users complain about this, and this might be why they sell the insurance in case it flies away. Sometimes, even after calibrating the drone and after you know standing there and spinning it around like the instructions ask you to do, like you're some kind of spinning top, and even after you calibrated the gimbal and I said yes to whatever liabilities you claim. Sometimes it'll fly away on its own. And if you see somebody insurance uh, sellers, the, DJI itself, it sells uh, insurance, but you have to buy it within the first 48 hours of owning it. They'll explain to you that the insurance covers flyaways. I don't know how that happens. Maybe too much interference in the area. Maybe it's a flaw with the drone, but it will fly away on its own. And the reason I bought this was because my first drone, it got caught in one of those circumstances. Now, it does have sensors that help it detect when a, a building is nearby or an object or an electrical line. And that might be the reason why sometimes it'll fly away. It detects when things are close to it. But I would say that it's not perfectly calibrated and perhaps it could be fixed with software or firmware upgrades. But sometimes you'll see that it'll take off. And, then, and anyone who's flown a drone, a very scary thing that can happen is that once you start going up and let's say you're over water or around a lot of buildings, it starts all of a sudden go one way and you know you didn't ask it to go that way. You're not controlling it. It has a mind of its own and just goes away. And then, Sometimes it'll remember that it's not near anything and it'll calm down and then you could direct it. But even it'll, sometimes it'll go in a crazy spin and you're like, uh oh, uh oh, am I going to have to find my GPS to find where it landed? Or is, do I have to invest in a new, new drone? Which is not a good feeling. But just know that it can happen. Just like with the original one that I had. To, to be transparent with you, the original one, I have flown 450 successful flights before one that was unsuccessful. So I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I'm a pretty good pilot is what I'm saying. And I've flown in heavy winds. I would say I wouldn't fly it over 15 mile per hour winds to be safe. I'm sure it can go, I've heard people fly it in 25 mile per hour winds with no problems, but just to be safe, I wouldn't just let it go far away in 17 mile per hour winds. If you're gonna fly in wind, make sure it goes straight up and make sure it goes straight down. That's my advice. You might have your own methods of doing things, but this is what I'm asking you to do if you want to take precautions. Uh, what else can I say about this drone? It's a nice drone. It's also very light. You can take it on the plane with you. I have taken it on the plane with me. It's, um, the batteries last pretty long. If you had other drones like the Autel Robotics, original big bulky drone that they had the big orange thing that came out, I would say maybe 2016, 2017, the batteries last a long time. They don't have a swelling problem like those batteries had that made that drone an ornament right now for many people who decided to invest in that and rendered it useless. But this is, Again, if you're thinking twice about getting this drone and you're looking at the negative reviews, go ahead and get it. Try it out. It's not like one of those cheap drones that you'll see on a lot of these, uh, let's say even on Amazon, you'll see some cheap drones, cheap drones. You'll, someone, your child might ask you, oh, can I have a drone? Or your teenager might say, can I have a drone? And you say, okay, oh, why do I want to pay $500 for a drone when I could get them one that's $25 and it has a five minute battery? And they're not going to like that. And you're not gonna like wasting your money on something that most likely is not gonna work. The images on those drones are inferior. And uh, if you're a photographer, I would recommend the Mini 2, the DJI Mavic Mini 2, in that um, you can edit uh, a nice image off of the images that you're able to take with this drone. You're also available to adjust the temperature of the colors on this drone. You're also available to zoom in a little bit 
something that you weren't able to do in the original mini and um i like it i like it i haven't gotten too many pro problems using this drone you the only problems that you might have while using this drone is using it in an area that's restricted so it won't take off and they might take it and you'll notice from the time that you turn on the controller and the app on your phone right it works with the dji fly more app and the time that you turn on the the drone it might take a little bit of time for both the drone and the controller to sync but once they're synced and you start rising the drone, you'll see that it says, oh, there's a, it reaches maximum altitude. That usually means it's not completed sinking. And it, what I mean, uh, it's not ready. That means you'll go, let's say 30 meters and then it'll stop. And then you'll see, okay, home, it'll say home point has been updated, which means that now you could uh, legally go up to and say 120 meters, which is pretty high Especially if you're within the city. So you'll go to a safe distance and uh, But it has capacity to go even higher and for that they recommend that you go to an area that's open And hopefully it won't fall out of the sky and land on somebody's head But the way you know how much battery you have left You look at the back you turn it to the underside and you press here on the power button, the power button right here, and it has two bars and a flanking and a blinking third bar left. And the way you actually turn it on, you see it turns off when I take my finger on it. You press it once, and once you get the light going, you hold it, and now it's ready to be paired with the controller. And once and once you turn it on, you have these lights under here. You can actually customize those lights. Let's say you don't like the colors that you see in the sky when you find this drone. You could actually pick another one. You could pick red, you could pick blue, you could pick purple, you could pick green. Whatever color you can see better at nighttime or to make this more visible, you can choose on the Fly More app that you can download after you get the drone. Another thing about this drone is that you'll see that you'll start going back and forth between photo mode and video mode and you can do that with a touch of a button here you no longer have to just touch the phone like you did in the first in the first version you can just press a button here and it'll switch from photography to video and then you can just start recording um, on your phone and uh, what else can i say about it it um if you are going to fly it's safe oh, uh, in that you don't have to register it with the FAA because it's under the required weight for you to register. It. So it's two, let me see, 249 grams. I believe that's the limit before you have to register it. So they, the DJI company did this knowing that you won't have to register it. Rules are rules. So uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty nice. The only thing I would say about it, um, it seems to be thrown off by a lot of transmitters and receivers in the area and the GPS if you're flying in an area that is a restricted area. So I wouldn't get to, uh, if, you're, if it's your first time flying a drone and you don't have licenses, things like that, I wouldn't just do it guerrilla style around a lot of buildings just because you don't want to ruin your experience with, um, with your drone, especially if it's your first time. Get a few flights under, under um, your belt. You're not supposed to fly it indoors, but you can fly it indoors. Let's say you have a, uh, an event that you want to record indoors or you just want some aerial pictures. Uh, you can do that with this drone and it'll stay at a safe distance. I've used these at weddings. I've used this at graduations. I've used this anywhere that they need another, an alternative an innovative form of photography so of course you know i'm a photographer i've been a photographer for years now and it's an added tool that you can give to your customers for value so if you hire me know that i come with my own own equipment i come with my camera lenses i come with three drones and all serve their purpose and um 
If you don't want to take your most expensive drones to smaller events, you can take this drone. This drone, you'll spend about $500, anywhere from $500 to $700 on this drone, but it'll do the job. Just know you're going to get something that gets the job done. So with that being said, that's an introduction as well as a pretty thorough and pretty thorough information as to what this drone can do and what to expect when you open it. All right. Thank you. Go out there.